What if I told you you can learn from the co-founder or CTO of a tech company how to land a job as a self-driving car engineer? If you're new here, I'm Sina, a surgical robotics software engineer, and in this video, we are reacting to a video put out by Amazon's self-driving car company, Zoox, titled Landing a Job at Zoox with co-founder and CTO, Jesse Levinson. This video is sponsored by WalesBot Technology. More on them later. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Today, I'm excited to have our co-founder and CTO, Jesse Levinson, here with me to discuss the autonomous vehicle industry, Zoox's journey thus far. Uh, we're gonna share details about Zoox's culture, what it's like to work here, and also what we're looking for a potential Zoox's crew. Is Zoox's only hiring experts in the autonomous vehicle industry? I'll take a little bit of this. So. Um, we are not. We actually value critical thinking. We actually have specific interviews that we give centered around critical thinking, the ability to really break down problems and really uh, re really approach them from a first principles uh, standpoint. Um, domain knowledge is really not um, that valuable for many of our role roles. Certainly there are some that require it, but and on the whole, we really value critical thinking. Um, do you have anything to add to that? I would just say, you know, if you're not sure, apply, right? Yep. Like worst case, we say, hey, you know, you don't know enough about this thing or that thing, but we're really looking for a diverse range of candidates with, you know, experience that can translate across industries. You know, if you think about Zooks, when we started the company, almost nobody had experience working on autonomous vehicles because it was a, a new industry. And so now it's it's not as hard to find people who have worked on autonomous vehicles, but still most people we hire have not specifically worked on autonomous vehicles before, and that's totally fine. When they mention domain knowledge, they're referring to experience with self-driving cars, and I agree with them. However, cracking a Zooks interview with robotics software engineering roles can be quite challenging if you do not have the domain skills. At the same time, it was valuable advice from Jesse when he said, if you're not sure, just apply, right? So it doesn't hurt to apply even if you do not meet all the skill requirements listed in the job description. I can share plenty of stories about people who got hired despite not checking all the boxes. What core skills are you looking for when hiring machine learning engineers? So the most important thing that we're looking for is that you actually understand how the machine learning algorithms work uh, and, and how you could and sort of you know, adjust them. And, and I think we see a lot of folks come through who you know, they sort of learn how to train a model. Like they're like, okay, you know, I download you know, this PyTorch or this TensorFlow or this, and you know, I, I give it some training data, and then I get a model, and like, now I'm a machine learning engineer. Um, and, and that's actually, there's nothing wrong with, like, that's a good skill set to have and you can do great things with that. But when we're looking for machine learning engineers at Zooks, we're looking for people who have sort of a, you know, two or three layer deeper understanding. So you can kind of go through the math of how does this machine learning algorithm work? Why might this machine learning algorithm work better or worse than this other one? You know, if, if you have a, if you train a model and you have this, you know, you see that it has some, some limitations, what are some of the things you might do to try to improve it? Uh, whether it's on the training data side or the, you know, the actual model or how you connect the layers or whatever it is. And, and we really try to make sure people have that sort of significantly deeper understanding. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's not something that everybody has. Uh, but, but given that we are really trying to innovate on the core algorithms and how we put them together, that's something that's important to us. I think this is very important and holds true for other fields such as computer vision as well. I can't stress enough how often I've asked candidates computer vision questions only to find they could not answer because they relied solely on built-in functions in OpenCV library without understanding the underlying logic of computer vision algorithms. Right, and I think a common question that sort of segues off of that that I uh, often get from candidates is if somebody does not have a machine learning background, um, can, is that something that they can pick up here at Zooks? So yes and no, right? Like I don't think that we would typically hire somebody into a machine learning position with no machine learning experience. Having said that, we have actually done a really great job, especially with our internal mobility programming program, of helping people who came into Zooks maybe without much of a machine learning background, who had a lot of interest in machine learning, get that experience in their job and then transition to be a machine learning engineer. So sometimes people come from you know, QA or from software infrastructure uh, or from areas where you might not have to have that type of an AI background. And then sort of, you know, they've gotten to work with other people who have that background uh, just because they're curious. And then over, you know, a two or three or four year period, they've kind of transitioned to that new area. And some of them have become absolutely amazing, right? It's like one of our, one of our absolute best 
engineers in prediction. Uh, one of our, you know, we don't have too many senior staff engineers, mm -hmm. but one of our senior staff engineers in prediction joined us as a software infrastructure engineer without too much of an AI or machine learning background. He's one of our best AI ML people now, uh, and he's gotten a lot of that experience in the, I don't know, six or seven years that he's been at Zoot, which is super rewarding to see. Wow, what a fantastic question and an excellent answer. This is so true. Most big companies have internal mobility programs where after a year or two with the company, you can switch to other teams if you're really interested and willing to learn the necessary skills. In fact, it's a great strategy for many of you to indirectly land your dream role. For instance, if you are a test engineer with like a couple of years of experience, but you'd like to work as a robotics software engineer, a good approach would be to first apply for a test engineer role at a major company, at a major robotics company, then spend a year or two at this role, and meanwhile build connections within the robotics software team, acquire the core skills they need, and then use the company's internal mobility program to transition into the robotics software engineer role. Your ideal, your, your dream job. I think I may or may not have recruited that person. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but that's something that's really important to emphasize. I, I think uh, on-the-job learning has been uh, is, is undervalued. Um, I think people often think that they need to go get a degree in something to really do the job. And oftentimes what we've seen at Zooks is some of our best engineers, our best employees, actually transition in those roles from other fields and they actually learn on the job over the course of um, several years with us. And I think one thing that Zooks does really well is allow for people to really acquire new skills and, um, and, and work with other people. And that's just part of our overall culture. This hits close to home because it's similar to my own journey from robotics mechanical engineering to robotics software engineering. I slowly acquired the essential skills needed for robotics software engineering, utilized the internal mobility program, and did a lot of on-the-job training, which many may consider the most effective way to learn a new skill. Um, okay, as a program manager coming from the financial services space, are there any courses or resources on AV that you recommend to help me stand out from the pack? That's an interesting one. Um, there are definitely some sort of, you know, I think Udacity has a couple of courses on sort of learning how autonomous vehicles work. Uh, I think there might be something on Coursera. Who knows? Maybe even LinkedIn has something nowadays. Um, so I definitely think that's a great idea just to sort of, you know, learn as much as you can. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, I don't want to sort of oversell that. Like if you say, hey, you know, I have a certificate or a nano degree in this other thing, like, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be like, oh my God, this person like automatically is super qualified for this position because, you know, w whatever your sort of main area expertise is and whatever the thing is that, that we would be hiring you to do, the most important thing is that you're qualified in that area. And so if you're really good at a thing that we need, even if you don't know too much about autonomous vehicles, that's okay. Um, but if you are interested in autonomous vehicles, whether it's, you know, how they work on a technical side or some of the kind of, you know, policy uh, or societal implications, it certainly doesn't hurt to, to educate yourself. And worst case, hopefully you learn something interesting. Yeah, um, nano degrees are, are great. More specifically, the knowledge they give you as a candidate. They're able to inter answer some of the interview questions that we give you better and really understand the space better. And that goes all the way back to uh, really knowing what you're getting into. So then how you can translate skills that you picked up in the financial services space over to uh, a role at Zooks. Okay, so he mentioned two nano degree programs from Udacity and one from Coursera. You'll find the links to all three in the description box. Additionally, I did a complete review of Udacity's Intro to Self-Driving Car Nano Degree, and you can check it out here. All right, so let's watch the last question, which is perhaps a question many of you may have. Oh, sorry, this is not the last question, but regardless, let's, let's keep watching the video. Could you tell us some common programming languages and libraries that we should be acquainted with, and the concepts that we should be experienced with in order to be a good mm. fit at Zooks? So the, the most common programming language we use at Zooks are C++ and Python. Mm -hmm. um, C++ mostly for things that run on vehicle and Python mostly for things that don't, but there's you know, some of everything. Uh, actually, I think the most important thing is not that you need to learn you know, a particular language or library. Uh, we actually, when we interview candidates, we, we do less of like, oh, do you know this specific piece of syntax? There's a little bit of that, but it's more like, how do you think, right? Can you write an algorithm to solve this problem in your favorite programming language? Or, you know, let's think about system design and system architecture. So we're not so much looking like, are you the expert at this particular library? We assume that 
you know, by the time you've learned computer science, whether it's, you know, in school or, or, or some other way, uh, and by the time you have hopefully some industry experience, that you can translate those skills to other primary languages or other libraries. If you can only do, you know, oh, I only know this one language and I can't do anything else, that would probably be pretty limiting. Yes, Jesse just confirmed once again what I've been telling you guys in this channel. Step three, master C++ and Python. And that is C++ and Python are the most common programming languages used in robotics. C++ serves as the go-to language for on-vehicle and production in many robotics projects. While Python is often used for developing proof of concept or off-vehicle applications. If you want to know why, watch this video. Typical interview process at Zooks begins with a recruiter, uh, and that leads to a phone interview. Usually there's one to two phone interviews. Uh, this is followed by uh, an on-site. An on-site interview process at Zooks typically takes about four to five hours of on-site interviews. Um, this is all wrapped up with a leadership interview because fundamentally what we really look for in candidates is for them to also interview us. We want them to come into Zooks, eyes wide open, knowing what they're gonna get into. So I did some digging on websites like Glassdoor and Blind, and I even spoke with someone who went through the Zooks interview process, and guess what? The interview process at Zooks is quite different from your typical tech company interview. So you know how at places like Google, they usually start with a bunch of live data structures and algorithms coding questions. Then there's the on-site interview with usually four rounds of more data structures and algorithms questions, a system design interview, a machine learning interview if you're going for an AI or machine learning role, and of course the classical behavioral interview. Here's where Zooks make things up. Most of the time, they will skip the data structures and algorithms part. Instead, they will ask you math questions. All right, let's go. Step one, learn math. Step one, learn math. Step one, learn physics and math. Like algebra, probability, and geometry. They will also throw in some C++ trivia questions. If you're aiming for a senior role, you might even get an object-oriented design challenge. So pretty different than a typical tech interview, right? But I actually like Zook's interviews better because they evaluate you based on the skills needed for the job, such as math, C++, and object-oriented design, not data structures and algorithms that you may not really use much. Jesse, you've been involved with in, in a lot of interviews at Zooks. You've spoke to the majority of uh, our crew. Uh, what advice do you have for candidates, especially when it gets to the later and later uh, stages of the interview process? You know, one of the things that can help people stand out a bit is if they've sort of taken the time to understand Zooks specifically and what makes us unique. Uh, when when we're looking for folks, you know, obviously we're looking for people who are qualified and all these sort of usual things, but. One of the characteristics we especially look for at Zooks, and this is one of our company values, is folks who are particularly inquisitive. That means basically, you know, asking questions about why they're doing what they're doing and, and trying to understand how things can be better. Mm -hmm. And so when we, when we talk to people and they ask us questions that indicate that not only have they done their research on Zooks, that's pretty obvious, but if they're maybe, you know, thinking one or two steps further and how, how they might be able to help us achieve our goals in their job and, and asking questions about that that show that they've thought through it uh, and have creative ideas, that's always a really good sign. I think this is sound advice that applies to almost any company. It's crucial to genuinely express your interest in the job and the company. This is something I always keep in mind when I conduct interviews and when I'm on the other side as the interviewee. Let's take a break and watch a short video from our sponsor, WadesBot Technology. Meet WadesBot E7 Pro coding robot for kids, where coding meets fun, Python, or even C++. With WadesBot E7, kids can dive into coding using Scratch, a drag and drop programming language made just for them. Build robots easily, explore tool models, and learn STEM skills. WalesBot E7 is a great gift for curious minds. Start coding and start creating.
The app offers 3D resources and story guides for endless fun. Now let's move on and watch the next part of the interview. Okay, what advice would you give a candidate who was interviewing at Zooks? Um, great question. I, uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. The first thing I would say is do your research. research uh, knowing the company, knowing what we do, uh, knowing that we're even an autonomous vehicle company, uh, you would be surprised. Um, that's really important. Um, but beyond that, working with your recruiter, working with people in the early, early early stages of the process to really prepare for the interviews and really know what you're what you're interviewing for, and um, those are all really important to help prepare for them for the interviews. Jesse, what what have you seen um, in preparation? What could candidates do better? So I think that you know, understanding the particular job and what we're looking for and how that fits into the broader context of Zooks is important. If you're not sure, by the way, those are good questions to ask during your interview process. Yep. Again, it's part of being inquisitive. Uh, it's always odd to me sometimes if I interview a candidate, I'll always make sure that there's time for them to ask me questions at the end. And uh, if somebody says I have no questions, that's a little bit strange to me. Like, not that, you know, not that I'm so interesting necessarily, but if you can't think of a single question, um, then it makes me think that maybe you're just not very curious. Uh, I, I doubt that it's that our interview process was so perfect that we answered every possible question mm -hmm. you could have. Um, and so again, it's like, you know, if, if the question you can ask has maybe a little bit to do with how you fit into the company, that's great. It doesn't have to be. Right? You can ask me a question about, you know, our strategy or how we differentiate ourselves from other companies. Um, but I think it's nice if at least you can sort of tie in, you know, how what you do might fit in and, and help what we do and uh, try to learn more about that. Yeah, again, just make sure to read the job description and do some research about the company and even the interviewer and ask some meaningful questions, not cliche ones, but questions that you may genuinely have about the job and the company. And finally, let's watch the last part of the video. Okay, what is the format of the four to five hour in-person interview day? All one-on-ones, a presentation to a group, panel interviews, all the above. It's all the above. Um, Zooks is a very diverse uh, workforce, like I mentioned previously. Uh, we have hardware, software, uh, operations, manufacturing, um, all, all the support functions you can imagine. So each team has a different preset uh, interview process. And you'll see that some teams, for example, with our procurement supply chain team, they ask everyone to do a presentation. Um, that's a part of their, uh, their, their workflow. Uh, for our hardware teams, they have take-home assignments. Uh, for technician roles, we have, we have welding tests. For software engineering roles, uh, we have uh, programming interviews and, um, and even some math interviews. So um, it's, a, it's really dependent on the role, and I encourage you to talk with your recruiter, work with your recruiter on figuring out um, what you're expected to, to, uh, to interview for, um, and also what, your, what, your, what your interview day looks like. Can I just add one more thing? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, when we when we interview you, uh, of course we're looking at, you know, do you have these particular mm -hmm. skills? Can you solve these types of problems? But another thing we're looking for, and I think we care maybe even more at Zooks than, than most companies do, is how do you think through problems, right? Like, what is your thought process? What do you do when you get stuck? Our interviews, uh, generally speaking, will give you hints if you're stuck. It's just not like, oh, let's you know, let's stump you and see where you fail, and then laugh at you because you don't know some formula or you, you know, like nothing like that. When you're when you're working in a company, you're going to get stuck from time to time. You're going to need help, and so one of the most important signals we can get in an interview is, you know, when you need help from the interviewer, can you take their hint? Can you take their suggestion instead of getting flustered or embarrassed? can you take that suggestion and then continue your way through the problem? And so we're not trying to trick or stump people, we're actually trying to see when you do need help, can you get that help and finish the problem uh, and, and get somewhere, because that's how real life is, that's how work is. You're not expected to just you know, go in a room by yourself, solve everything and come back with the answer. Thanks for watching and until next time, tune your PID and let's Jacobian jive to slam the dance floor.